uh, we moved to Madisonville three and a half years ago and quickly started coming to the church. And I like to get involved in the, in the children's ministry. So I help out in children's church and I do Sunday school, go to Sunday school. And um, I kind of like to help out wherever there's a need. So like with the trunk retreat that just happened and all the little tiny things, I love to just jump in and raise my hand and say, what do you need? I'll, I'll do that. Like okay. I can do this or that. I would really love it. Could you tell us, tell me about your faith story? Sure. Um, well, I grew up in a Christian home and I went to a Christian school, my whole primary education. Uh, I was a pretty straight laced kid, didn't really get into trouble. Um, just all around, didn't, didn't break the rules or anything, didn't cause any trouble. I definitely can pinpoint moments where the Lord was really kind of, kind of trying to draw me. But none of those moments really ever stuck. They, they kind of came here and then left, and then I just kind of went on my own life and kind of just led it the way I wanted to lead it. And so when I turned 18, because of various life hardships, traumatic things, family fractions, um, I decided that I no longer wanted to be the person that I was raised to be. I don't know why. <laughs> I mean, I think it was because of the certain things that happened in, in my life and um, in my family that kind of caused me to really shift in my view. But other than that, I don't really know why. It was like I woke up one morning and I was like, I don't want to be that person anymore. And I'm going to decide to be who I want to be. And what that was, was letting everyone know by my words and by my actions that I was not a Christian and I didn't want to be associated with that anymore. And I thought in my mind, well, what's the complete opposite of Christianity? I was like, well, I guess it would be something like Wicca. So I guess that's what I'll start getting into then. I guess I'll start being interested in that and pursuing that. I did that and that wasn't enough. I still wanted to walk and live in this rebellion to what I was raised in. So Wicca then led to, I don't know if you remember, but back in the late 90s, early 2000s, they had that whole goth scene that came on really strong. And I thought, well, that's totally opposite than what I was living before, before this. I was a straight laced, you know, that's opposite. That would shock people and show people that I didn't want to be a Christian. And so I started doing that. I dyed my hair purple, got all the piercings, got all the outfits, did everything. And of course, there's nothing wrong with purple hair and piercings and all that stuff. But what it was, was it was just a projection of what was going on inside, inside of what was really happening in my life. And and it really was just this downward spiral of self-destruction. And that just spiraled downwards until finally I was at this, this pit of just depression, loneliness, all the other things too, all of that just down there. So lonely and depressed and hopeless. And I, and I not only didn't know how to get out of it, I wasn't seeking a way to get out of it. And there I was. And, and that's where God came and got me out of that. And, and it blows my mind because I look back and I'm like, I wasn't at any point searching. Like I was in the hole, like just wallowing in there. And yet the Lord was so gracious to come down there and be like, you're done now, come with me. And I was like, okay. And that was 20 years ago. So it's been, I was 20 when that happened. And now I'm 40. So 20 years and here I am. But, and you know, you have two beautiful um, little girls, and, and I know that you desire and pray for them to know the Lord, like you've been able to build this relationship with God. So what are you doing to help your children grow up in the faith? There's a few things that first come to my mind, and one of them is just teaching them, I think, you know, obviously. We, I send them to church and they get all that too, but it's important for me to do that here at our home as well. And um, I feel like I'm blessed and called to be able to homeschool. So that's very easy for me to just build it into our curriculum. Um, but I think that is an important part of teaching them memory verses so that they'll always have those truths in their heart. Uh, they'll be able to go back to those and remember these truths about God. And I think another thing that's important to me too is teaching them that they have a part in God's story that we read these stories in the scriptures of all these people and we learn from their lives, but they're, they're a part of that too. And God's story goes beyond the Bible and that what part are, are my children going to play in that and kind of encouraging them in that and saying, what part are you, you going to be able to play, you know? Um, 
and then teaching them that one of those parts is just loving people. How can we just show love to people? Because that's a huge part of, of why we're here and why they're here and, and how they can touch other people's lives. I mean, you've kind of touched on this a little bit, but what are you hoping your children take with them as they grow older, especially out of your own experience of things that uh, for a while where you even rejected some of the things that you were taught, what are you hoping that they're going to take with them? Oh, I feel like that's a hard question because I never want my children to go through hard things. We don't, yeah. as parents. Um, but just wanting them to see that uh, that they have a God that loves them, that takes care of them. No matter what hardships they do go through, that they can fall back on that. No matter what road the Lord um, has them to lead in life, that... Um, giving them the secure foundation that they can always trust in the Lord, a God that loves them, um, and that will carry them through hard times, that will come and get them, you know, that will always pursue them, like that they have a God that will always pursue them um, and that loves them that much. I think that's what I want them to see most of all, because then when they realize that, then they begin to, that heart connection is there. You have a great opportunity to spend a lot of time with your girls. Um, is there anything that they teach you about faith? I think the first thing that comes to mind is their unconditional love. <laughs> that sometimes, you know, because as, as parents we fail at times, and as parents we can look back and be like, oh, I made that, that decision wrong, or I reacted wrong to that. But just to have a child come and freely forgive you and, uh, and wrap their arms around you mm -hmm. and hug you and a lot of times we think of it the opposite way, where it's like, oh, it's me hugging my children and I'm mm -hmm. showing them the Lord, but at the same time, my children do that to me too, where it's like, I'll mess up. And I'll be like, it's okay, mommy. And they'll come and give me a hug. And it's like, oh, that's the grace that God shows us as well. Like, it's okay. You messed up. I love you. Like, I'm here. I'm not going anywhere, you know, <laughs> especially at this young age that they have, that they're at. So we've talked quite a bit about faith and how you instill that in your children. And so why does it matter? Yeah. Why does it matter? <sighs> the purpose we have, like we're, why does it matter? Is because we're here as Christians to, to make disciples, to be the salt of the earth, to, to show and spread God's love and his kingdom. And it, it matters because that's why we're, we're here. That's our purpose mm -hmm. as Christians. We have lots of other purposes. We have lots of other jobs and roles and callings and stuff, but our main calling is to share the love of Christ and make disciples and be God's witnesses here on earth. So I think that's why it matters. Faith matters. <laughs>